When I was a victim of crime, it took me a number of years to get over what I got over with physically and um, possibly more so mentally because of um, just the amount of violence that's on telly anyway that people are conditioned to. Um, you know, I was stabbed and um, the knife nearly came out my back. You know, I didn't like walking this way. I'd, I'd walk two miles around the town as opposed to going, you know, the shortcuts and all sorts of stuff. Physically, I was very ill. Mentally, I suppose I was even worse. I had my nose broken into place, had two black eyes. My jaw had been slightly knocked out of place, had bruises, bruised ribs. Um, I'd been quite badly beaten up by the five of them. Um, so that was probably one of the scariest incidents I've ever been involved in. I was homeless for about nine months in the winter. I slept in a tent, I slept on park benches, just slept where I could basically, and I drank every day. I was constantly drunk and I got into trouble with the, the police. Started smashing people's windows, beating people up, getting into fights, stuff like that, you know. I was in the care since the age of three. I suppose it's the life I've had, really. It's been unsettled throughout my childhood and, you know, it's not been very pleasant. It's been horrible, like, you know, so. Not a nice experience for anybody to go through, it's not, so. What is the root cause of violence within young people? Um, I think it, it's about learning a language of violence. Um, and that starts at a very, can start at a very early age. And I think that comes from them living within their family, within their community, where violence is just part and parcel of the language that they, that they grow up with. I think there's a real danger of thinking that there is a cause of violence, like is there a cause of criminality, is there a reason why people kill each other um, and uh, for most people you know there are so many different reasons so I think the search to find a cause is actually going to prove fruitless. When I met my stepdad I was sexually abused, physically abused, mentally abused, I was taken into care at the age of 10, um, grew up in the kids homes around a lot of older kids, I think, you know, try to fit in to belong, so I started doing drugs, that kind of thing. The only person that I looked up for, looked look up to, was the, the local thug in the area, the one that had the most best girls, the best car, you know what I mean, all the rest of it. And they normally tend to be the ones that can look after themselves as well. So if you haven't got positive role models and everything else, somebody to show you there is a different way, you know what I mean, maybe you will go that way, you know what I mean. As a victim of it, um, I was bullied at school as well. I would say a large proportion of it is not knowing how to be emotionally supported. Um, if your parents are emotionally supporting you, um, you don't feel the need to take drugs. I'm not saying you know it's easy to be a parent, but I'm saying that parents should give their children more time. You know, like for me, I've I've just given up being a junkie for ten years of my life, and. That te in that 10 years of my life, you know, it was the most miserable sadness and pain, but that was the only way, that was my only escapism, my mask to the outward society that treats young people with malice. Yeah, I've got a lock Do you have a spot? Uh, yeah. I used, to, I used to go to school with Kelly Scott. Me and yeah. John both did. We got stabbed. Um, it was over a pot noodle. Over a pot noodle. Over a pot noodle, he got stabbed to death. In the flats just at the back, Ashton Court. And he used to live just over there. Which is what? Violence in young people is caused by just mindless vandalism. Um, boredom isn't even a word. There's plenty, plenty of things that children can do. There's no excuse for violence at any level at all. Especially when, you know, it's just brutal nasty, it's nastiness basically. I think youth are just nasty now. Paul suffered um, 
facial fractures to his cheekbones, his nose, his jaw, his eye sockets. He had a compound fracture of his skull, which caused him brain damage. Um, he had the worst injuries I've seen on anybody still alive. Um, and as such, I conducted a murder investigation thinking that was the way it was going to go. I think the sentence reflects society's revulsion at this level of violence, um, particularly drink-related violence, which is escalating out of control. It makes you into a different person. When you've had a drink, you feel like you're Superman and you can basically do what you like and go around causing trouble. And It's definitely alcohol fueled without a shadow of a doubt, all these cheap drinks. Um, I've seen it, witnessed it, Fridays, Saturdays, every night of the week actually. With regards to alcohol and the younger generation being violent, then yes it certainly wouldn't help the matters, but I don't think it is the main route to it. You know, I think there is something more deeper than that myself. What always amazes me with young people in prisons it is, I mean it is a school and it's a school for learning other techniques of violence. It's learning about how to shut down and put a hard shell up. If you show any chink in your armour, uh, you will be, you know, you will find that you're going to be bullied, you will find that, you know, that you will be bottom of the pile, and in a prison that is not a, a nice place to be. It's, it's a horrific place to be. It's took a lot out of me. Um, it has, it's took away all my youth, because, like I said, I've been in seven times and that, seven to eight times, and um, I've missed a lot. I, I mean, I even think about little things like, um, you know, your family, family albums, photo albums and that. Like, I'm not in none of them. I was in full care till I was 21, and I've been in and out of jail pretty much since I was 19. You know, in and out of institutions most of my life, and I feel comfortable, more comfortable in this environment than I do outside. I find it easier to deal with life in here than I do out there now, because I'm institutionalised. It's just fear of not making it, getting out in one piece and healthy. That's what my fear is. Clearly there's a, a, an obvious relationship between someone who's experienced violence in, in, in situ, certain situations and then the taking on of that culture of violence as being the appropriate way to respond in, in, in problematic situations. There is a cycle of abuse that people buy into and I think for us to grow as a species we have to end that cycle of abuse. So uh, people think I'm a strong guy because I stood on a nightclub door. Actually I'm not, I'm a strong guy because I forgave a guy that sexually assaulted me and could have ruined my life. I would say people ought to forgive for their own health, for selfish reasons, so that you can free yourself from that dead weight on your back that's still destroying you because you can't move forward, you can't face the future as a free agent because you're still hampered by the anger and resentment from the past. But I should also say it's not an easy process. We all know when there's going to be violence. We will have an instinct, but most of us don't listen to it. But if you're aware and you're switched on, you will know when there's violence. But mostly you can avoid the majority of violence just by not drinking in certain places, by not frequenting certain places, and by having the right attitude yourself. Love doesn't cost a thing. It's free. You know, all, all any child craves for is love. And, you know, money, that can't buy love. If you want love, you want love from the person, you want your parents to care about you. I think, uh, you, you know, no matter how much you hurt, I think as I've grown older, I've learned that you have to trust people. And that not everyone's bad in the world, do you know what I mean? I wouldn't wish that on anybody, what I went through. But um, you've got to keep going. Keep on trucking, mate. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I felt well sorry for him because he, he turned yeah. around, he, he, he was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 16. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And his life just went downhill from there. You know, at the age of four, he was abused till 10. Yeah. 
because of his stepdad and his mum, do you know what I mean? He was mentally abused, physically abused, yeah. sexually abused, do you know what I mean? I felt well sorry for him. Yeah, I wanted to cry. To I was nearly crying there. I was sat there and he was telling me the answers and I really wanted to cry. It I was, does get to you, though. It just gets you head. emotional. I was nearly crying, do you know what I mean? Uh, that's why I didn't want to ask any more questions because I didn't want to hear the